Peter Myers, you're here putting up a yurt with your friends and supporters on the courthouse here in Nelson, Wednesday morning. What's this made of? Um, well, it's a peaceful protest um, for our friends who are to appear in court at 10 o'clock. Our friends are being um, prosecuted uh, for having healthy, warm homes that are very affordable. And um, what we're doing is we're doing a peaceful protest to try and get out the message to New the New Zealand government, building code people, and others that are that are holding back the availability of low-income housing or affordable housing. And so this is a good example of uh, healthy, warm, affordable housing. Doesn't look too warm at the moment, though, does it? <laughs> no, it's not too warm at the moment. We'll be putting a wrap on that side of it. And we didn't bring our insulation today because the insulation for a couple hours, it doesn't really matter. No, no. And what kind of insulation do these homes have? Uh, mostly wool. Mm. Yeah. So wool bats go in between two layers and they're very cozy and very oh, warm. Good. Yeah, and what about on the flooring side of things? Our flooring can be done with um, a wood or also wood with insulation, with, uh, again, wool underneath it. Mm. Mm. So it's usually a wood floor. Right. How long will it take to put this ute up then? Oh, it takes us about 45 minutes total time to put it up. Well, that's a quick, fast and easy construction, isn't it? It sure is, and it's, again, really healthy and, and, uh, and lovely to be living in and outside almost at the same time. Yeah. So now your friends are here. This is a bit of a tough day for them. TDC have prosecuted them yep. for living in such a house. What would you like to see happen? What's the outcome? That's a good question. Um, I think the, the best outcome would be for um, there to be a pulling back of uh, regulation and um, bureaucracy um, so people don't have to pay for a, a building permit and then pay for an engineer and then pay for a geotech person, then pay for an architect, then pay for something else and then pay for treated wood and then pay for something else. And so they could just get on with actually building healthy homes for themselves and not have to be out of pocket $50,000 for a lot of superfluous things. Mm. So there's just too much, too much paperwork and too many people taking a bit of the pie. I guess, yeah, it's, um, it would be good if there could be some process. And again, if you make a process and you're making more regulation, more bureaucracy, it's kind of a tricky catch-22 situation. Mm. But to let go of some of the control and mm. some of the... Um, uh, regulation would be m allowing people to be able to be responsible for themselves and not necessarily have um, authority babysitting people. You've had security come here and tell you to cease your building project. Yeah. Why was that? Oh, um, this land, we didn't know this at the time because we, we decided to just set up our peaceful protest without asking. And, um, and so what happened is the security of the courthouse came out and he said that he's um, been responsible for taking care of this land for the Department of Conservation because this is actually, these trees are protected. And so they were concerned about us possibly hurting the roots or hurting the trees. Mm -hmm. And so he asked us to go over to dock. And so I went over to dock and I said, hey, could we set up the yurt? And when I got to dock, they, they were all smiles and very nice. And so the process that happened there was not a process because the process to set up a yurt, they said, would take a lot longer than the process to um, try and get us off. Oh, no, sorry. The process to try and get us off would take a lot longer than the process to just let us do it. And so they said they'd just allow us to set up the yurt and turn their head for a little bit, which was really nice. Yeah. As long as, of course, no damage is done to these beautiful old trees. Yeah. 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 And so everything you, is looking like a great kind of day. The, Weather's beautiful, it's very cold this morning, but uh, I see you've got the family involved, everyone's helping. Yeah. This is a good sign. Yeah, and later on there's probably going to be a lot more people showing up once the uh, sun comes up a little bit more. We expect probably about 100 people or more, so there's quite a bit of people standing behind our friends. And not just behind our friends, but behind trying to um, allow lots of people to do lots of different things without so much bureaucracy yeah. holding them back. Now your friends, do they know this is going on? Yeah, well, they're aware. Um, they have a lot of other things going on, so um, some, of, some of their friends, myself included, decided that we could try and take some of that energy and, and help them and, 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 uh, and set up something. And again, it's not just a protest just for our friends, it's for everybody that's looking at bureaucracy going, oh, I'd really like to be allowed to do this without having to pay $800 for a permit just to ask if I can dig a hole or whatever. So yeah. it's not just for this one issue, it's for all the issues of how we think our system might not be working very well. 
Well, Peter Myers, good luck and thank you very much for talking to Mainland Television today. Thanks a lot, Chrissy. Appreciate it. Irma, it's a big day today here at the Nelson Courthouse. Now, you're representing yourself, but you're really kind of representing the 1212 community, aren't you? And everyone else in the Motueka area or Tasman area really. Yeah that's right it, it, it sort of started off with us and then it grew into bigger and actually I would like to bring it to a nationwide level we've had like a groundswell of support in, in the last few weeks um, people from all over the country that I've never met or seen before you know sending emails and, and even ringing us and saying hey guys you know this, this is about all of us and, and uh, there is something in New Zealand that is not working mm. and we want change. Well we've got such a housing shortage People are living in garages and, and these are just normal garages without any installation. Something's got to be done. Yeah, we, we think it's time and, and what we really want is more flexibility and we know that um, you know, we were taken to court over a plan that is 17 years old and it's, it's been acknowledged by the council as well that it's out of date but here we are now today you know, going to court and being charged with really some serious uh, issues. What are those issues? Yeah, the, the issue is that there's a few things here. One, of course, that, that um, concerns a lot of people is affordable housing. Um, so Chris has been living in a yurt that he bought secondhand seven years ago, and it cost him $7,000. He's been living in it for uh, you know, all this time. It, it's perfectly warm, safe, and healthy. Uh, he recently went to a doctor, and his, the doctor looked at him, and he, and he said, for a 71-year-old, you are in amazing shape. And here we have the council coming to us and said, oh, we're concerned about your health and safety. And we say, it's okay. We appreciate your concern, but we actually don't need you. We, don't, we can look after ourselves. And we want to look after ourselves. And, and, and it's not just you know, us individually, but as a community, we look after ourselves. And not just our group of people. We, we are part of the wider community. Mm. And, and I think that's what, and what you've seen in Christchurch with the earthquakes. That's what you need when in, in times of you know, big changes or, or uh, things that are upsetting is it all falls back to community and um, yeah we think that at the moment you know if you if you can create a community but you need a lot of money for to go through the whole uh, legal hoops and to get resource consents and and why what, what is it for now the charges that you're facing today can you tell us a quick brief brief overview of those yeah, so we, um, we are charged both under the RMA and the Building Act. Um, it all started with the, with the Environment Court and the RMA, and that means that we could face imprisonment of up to two years and fines up to $300,000. Um, once we started talking to the council and finding, trying to find a solution, we actually got slammed with a notice to fix as well, which means that under the Building Act, we also now are facing charges of up to $20,000 a day if we're not complying. And, you know, those sort of, um, you know, threats, as I call them, they were enough to actually finally make us back off and say, hey, no, I can't do this anymore. We've got a young family, you know, we've got three children. Um, if they were a bit older, if, like, if we were 10 years old, I would go to prison for this. I was like, okay, then throw me in prison if you really think that we are criminals. But actually, um, I, I, we couldn't do it anymore. I, I was like, okay, we need to back off. Um, that doesn't mean that, that this is the end of it. No. We, we really want to you know, move forward and, and we just need to get this out of the way. Yeah. Um, the people have moved uh, out of the dwelling, so at, really we are complying um, with the environment court order. Um, they are now in camper van and house truck and that is legal. We've had so many offers of accommodation that we can move every two months into a different a truck or caravan which is legal so for the rest of the of the life they can move around and that's legal but it doesn't make sense does it and i think that you know parliament you know when they when they gave these regulatory powers to the local authorities they never intended such absurdities that it's okay to live in a caravan for two months and then hop into another caravan but you know you need to take a year down that is, I mean, you see it here, and this is not insulated now, but Chris's yurt is insulated with wool. It is an amazing place to live in. And it's not everybody. We're, I'm not telling people that they should all... I mean, we live in a, in a normal house, but it is an option. And people that don't want to have a big mortgage and, and just, just want to live simply, um, I think, you know, the councils, I really encourage them to look at this as a really suitable alternative. Now, Irma, you're facing the court, and I believe you're going to be representing yourself. Uh, yes, I think there's no other way. I mean, 
from the beginning, it, it's not just about money. One thing is, of course, the money. It's like, okay, if we if we had used lawyers in this process, we would probably still be standing here, I <laughs> really think, because according to their laws, we are wrong. You know, but they, it's doubtful whether they actually lawful those. They they are they are legally all right, but are they actually lawful? Under human rights. Yeah, that's right. And so, um, but also, if, I just can't do it. I I can't. You know, I, it seems crazy that this society is sort of expecting people to pay a lot of money for lawyers to defend yourself against your own public servants. It, it doesn't make sense. TDC's response since you've complied. Um, We've only had one email saying that they have discussed our... Uh, we, we sent in a proposed uh, plan for settlement and they have discussed it, but that the, the, the hearing would still go ahead. So, we, no, we haven't really had any response to it. So we'll wait and see what happens today. Have you had any individual councillors approach you to, to see what the concerns are? Um, Oh yes, we, we have spoken to uh, several councillors, but uh, one in particular, Martine Bouillier, um, she's from Golden Bay, and, and she, I, I think she re has a real understanding of what the issues are. She can see through that we're not just a bunch of people that are wanting to be um, obnoxious. She can see what we're trying to achieve, and she's actually really, I think, helping um, yeah, you know, with these changes in the plan that are now under review to make sure that it, is, it, it, it becomes an opportunity for people to, to live differently uh, on a piece of land. Um, I, I don't know if I said already, but you know, we, we have 10 hectares of land. People say, oh, you're taking away productive land. The 10 hectares is not a, a piece of land that you can actually farm in a traditional sense. But we're living on it at the moment with 16 people. We're, we're sort of, you know, getting to almost complete self-sufficiency. That is an amazing efficiency of, of land use. And so it's, it's maybe not the tradition in the traditional sense, but, you know, we have all our own dairy products. I make cheese. Um, we have our own meat. Uh, we have cows and, and, and sheep meat. Uh, we have chickens. We have veggie gardens, orchards. You know, we, we're living very lightly on the earth. And I think it's ironic that we were taken to the environment court. It's like, what do you mean, you know? I mean, we, we share transport. We, we live so lightly on the earth. We, we are not a drain on the system. If one of us has a problem, you know, like uh, my friend had a baby and she has a mastitis coming up, she comes to me as a, as a mother with more experience. And we put cabbage leaves on and, and away she goes. She doesn't have to go to the doctor. You know, we, we're looking after each other. And, and not just with our own group of people, we, we're part of the, the wider community as well. Mm. And um, that's what we want to do. And we're happy to work with the council. But I, I refuse to pay money just for the system. You know, if, 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 if you're just paying money for paperwork, I, I just can't do it. I, I think that's what we want to change.